This is William Bridge. William Bridge was an incurable optimist, but he wasn't born that way. Whatever fires naturally stirred up in his young heart, it was the fuel of the Holy Spirit that got his fires really burning. William Bridge was born in around the year 1600 and probably in his 20s he was found in Cambridge studying at Emmanuel College and he graduated, spent a few years there hanging on as a lecturer and then he went into pastoral ministry taking on charges in Essex and then in Norwich. But William, who loved the scriptures and preached the word and wanted the churches to reflect the values that were found in the Bible, got into trouble with his bishop. His bishop was Matthew Wren. Actually, he's the uncle of Sir Christopher Wren, who uh, rebuilt St Paul's Cathedral and many of the other churches in London. But Matthew Wren didn't like the Puritans, and William Bridge was a Puritan. He was rooted and grounded in Scripture, and as a result of the friction between the two in the end, William had to leave his ministry and went into exile in Holland. In 1642, he made his way back to the UK and was involved with the Westminster Assembly and uh, began a fruitful ministry in London where he remained for 20 years, preaching the word of God and serving the people. But in 1662, along with 2,000 other Puritan ministers, he was thrown out of his living because he refused to be governed, instead of by the word of God, by the prayer book, restricted to a liturgy and a formula that was laid down by others and used week in, week out. Now, William Bridge had conscience that was rooted and grounded in the scriptures, and that was where his loyalty lay. Affliction, he said, is something that we can see not as an enemy, but as a friend. Because it's God himself who chastens and disciplines his people. And therefore, in the end, affliction is a gift of God rather than something to drag us down. He said, affliction doesn't come alone either. It comes with the promises of God. God promises he is going to carry us through and he's going to even work everything that comes against us for evil out for good in everything for those who love him and accord according to God's own purpose. He said that afflictions don't come alone either. Wherever God sends the rod of discipline, he sends the staff of comfort so that we can walk through the experiences that we undergo and come out on the other side, not just survivors, but we're changed by it and we accomplish things that we never would have done had we been left uh, simply in the course that we were going. So God achieves he, things in us. He put, produces fruits of righteousness and godly character and then opens up all kinds of new opportunities as a result of the hardships and afflictions that we experience in this life. Listen to Bridges as he wrestles with the problems that people experience in affliction. He hears people saying, but my affliction is not an ordinary affliction. My sufferings are not ordinary sufferings. I have lost all my comforts. I am stripped naked of all my former blessings and relations. I have been long afflicted. Many afflictions crowd and press in upon me like so many waves of the sea. Only there is this difference. The waves come and go. But my afflictions come and stay. They come and go not. They all stay upon me at once, and I see no end of all my afflictions. The floods are risen, O God. The water floods are risen, and to cover my soul. Yes, and these waters of affliction are so deep, I can feel no bottom, see no end of them. Have I not just cause and reason, then, to be much discouraged? And William Bridges responds, No, 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 no. You have no reason to be discouraged.